Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. Guys, we have five days left until Deep T becomes my neighbor. Well, she still is kind of my neighbor right yeah. now. Yeah, we're in the same yeah. neighborhood. <laughs> But I'm excited. I am so overwhelmed, though, because I packing is a lot and I've accumulated a lot in this apartment. <laughs> and yeah. oh, my God. Have you ever heard of Maria Kondo? Of course. Yes. I, I am like a religious follower of oh Marie my Kondo. Wait, I love And it's that. Marie Kondo, you ding dong. Oh, I'm sorry, Marie Kondo. <laughs> I was close. I was close. And I was like, I, Maria Kondo. I'm trying to Marie Kondo everything in my apartment right now. If it doesn't give me joy, I'm letting it go. But I legitimately have so many, like, like from when I played tennis back in the day, I have like shirts like that are from my tennis team and like, like hold a lot of value to me, but I have not touched it or worn it in like a year. And I'm like, do I get rid of it? <laughs> okay. So here's what I follow. Um, if I have not worn it in two years, I toss, or if it doesn't fit me anymore, regardless of how recently I, recent I bought it, I like will not toss it. I'll donate it. Yeah. But what if it has like sentimental value to you? Because that tennis team was such a big part of my life. I'm like, you know what I need? I need Take a somebody photo of it. Take a photo of it. And <laughs> that's a sentimental value. Should I make a quilt out of them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and gift it to myself? <laughs> That was imagine. Very, just like yeah. a quilt of all your old clothes. That's actually really cute. I like if hang it up not, on the wall. Remember back in the day when you would quilts on the wall. If that's not a red flag, I don't know what is. I know. I know. I, that's hilarious. Okay, maybe I won't do that. But yeah, I'm going to try to become a mil minimalist. I'm going to get rid of everything. Okay. That is my goal. I have five days to get this achieved. <laughs> Oh, but I, I am know. excited. I'm excited for the new digs. I know. I'm excited for you to move into um, my building. Well, I guess for those of you who didn't listen to our last episode, so the update is Deep D is moving into my building, which is yes. so, so exciting. Um, she's going to be like several floors down from me, but um, yeah, it's going to be yeah. like we have a sleepover every night in exactly. separate apartments. <laughs> what did you say earlier to me? She was like, do you, do you like sleepovers? We can like watch movies till two in the morning and then uh, you can sleep over. I'm like, yeah, we'll be in the same building. So I can just go some floors down, but I'm not staying at your apartment. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually hate adult sleepovers with girlfriends. Really? Yeah. If, if we're not like traveling together and like sharing a hotel yeah. room or an Airbnb, mm -hmm. I don't like when... I have some girlfriends like this, notably Ayana, who has been vocal <laughs> about it. And she's also said, like, Natalie hates sleepovers. So I'm not yeah. saying anything like, you know, that anything that's going to hurt her feelings. Um, but she loves like sleeping over um, at my house because like she's like, oh, we have like all night together. I personally hate it. Like I was like, <laughs> I want to sleep in my own bed. I want to like just I don't know. I just hate the concept of it. I was like, look, I go to bed at 10 p.m. anyways. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Exactly. I know what you mean. Sometimes I, I enjoy it, but like very rarely because you and I both are in the same boat. Like, I don't like when people are touching me. Like, I barely let my sister. I mean, I'll sleep over with my sister. But like when she's like trying to cuddle me or something or my mom, I'm like, please stop touching me. Like, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> Even if they're sleeping in a different room, I was like, I kind of just want to be alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like we could end the night here, but tomorrow morning, like, I don't want to see you. Yeah. Like you can come back over at 9am tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. But, um, I'm not a big fan of them, but I think a lot of my friends really do like them. It's like a way to just, I guess, spend yeah. time together, but yeah. I won't, I won't make you like actually stay at my place. Well, obviously. Ever. If anything, I'll be like, get out. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, pass out on the couch and that'll be like, um, you fell asleep. Can you go back to your apartment, please? <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> But um, um, I I don't know how you're gonna move because I know you barely packed. I know. I, I just started. like I wish you the best of luck. It's I'll fine. be here if you need me. <laughs> you know, one thing about me is when there's like a strict deadline, I work the hardest I've ever worked. If I if I have like a little bit of like a couple days here and there that I can spare, then I'm like I'm gonna put I'm a procrastinator. I'm gonna push it. I'm gonna push it till the very end until Are I. Are you a procrastinator? I'm a thousand percent a procrastinator. Totally. Okay, so 
I have been procrastinating lately and I think it's because of you. I think no. I'm like mirroring your working style. That is not. Because <laughs> Excuse typically me? I will like, let's say I have a deadline and it's like four days till that deadline. I will use those four days like very well. I'd be like, okay, this is what I'm doing this day, the next day. And like the days leading up to it to make sure that I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not working, you know, like I'm not stressed, <laughs> but all of a sudden the last few weeks, I am procrastinating. I love and I that think you're because of you. Uh, that is like you're projecting that onto me. That is so <laughs> ridiculous of you, but I'm the opposite. If I have a test to study for, I will start like 9 p.m. The, the day before. <laughs> no, I'll start like a week before. No, thanks. But now I'm becoming a huge procrastinator. Well, it's not because of me. Let me tell you, that's because of you. <laughs> well, I'm really excited about this episode because we have a really, really special guest on, Carousel from Perfect Match. If you guys don't remember her, she got engaged to Joey on the show, um, Perfect Match season one, um, and she was so bubbly and so fun. So we're really, really, really looking forward to talking to her. Um, but you know her pretty well, Deep D. Yeah, yeah. I met her when I was out in New York and she was so, so sweet and just like kind of like took me under her wing and like she drove me around. We went out together and yeah, it was a really good time. And you can just tell that she is just a good soul, you know? Yeah, I've heard really good things about her. Mm -hmm. I've never met her, but obviously every Netflix person runs in the same Netflix circle, especially when you do a reality TV show. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see like what she has to say about her experience. You're going to love her. I'm excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'll love her too. I really love like the content she puts out there. She has a beautiful singing voice. So yes. yes. Yeah. And I hope you guys enjoy too. Mm -hmm. We are so excited to have Carousel Snow on our podcast today. Carousel, welcome to Out of the Pods. Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> the last time I saw you was in New York. And honestly, you were so, so kind and sweet to me. And you literally like drove me around, showed me such a good time and the New York nightlife. Like it was so sweet. So we're really excited to have you today. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like anytime anyone visits Jersey or New York, I'm like, all right, like, y'all got to get the full experience. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I ride or die for the place where I'm from, you know? <laughs> yeah, roll out the yeah. red carpet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. We haven't met before, though, um, but I feel like I know you just because we're like part of the Netflix reality TV show universe. And obviously, I saw you on Perfect Match. So, I'm really excited to talk to you today because there's so much I want to know. And I feel like you have such an amazing personality. So um, I'm I'm just really excited to get to know you, honestly. Thanks. Yeah, no, I, I was so shocked, too. I, it was literally today where I'm like, oh, my gosh, wait, I've never actually met Natalie before. <laughs> I'm like, but like, I feel like in the Netflix world, you just kind of assume, you know, everybody. Yeah, I love that, like, unwritten rule. If you're ever at an event and you recognize someone else who's been on reality TV, who you have never met, you guys are automatically like, hey, what's up? You know, yeah. like, like long I know. Like, distance cousins or something. <laughs> long distance cousins. Exactly. I know that is so true. Like if I go to an event and I don't know anyone there, but I see someone from a Netflix reality TV show immediately, I feel like there's a bond. Like, oh, you're yes. just like, I know you, yes. you know me, we've gone through the same things. Yes. Like, yes. it's so, Wait, it's so fun just being part of it. With Danielle on y'all season. Oh, um, yeah. The we were both at a softball game. I never met Danielle before. We've always been like friends on like Instagram. We'll reply to each other's stuff. And I was like, girl, are you doing this? Because like, I'm doing this too. And like, I don't think anyone else here is an athlete. If you said, or I think we're the only ones not an athlete. And she was like, oh my God, thank God. The second I met her, it was like, literally, we've been like best friends forever. We were like, yeah. you know, going out, hanging out. I'm hanging with her family. Like, it, it, it's such a fun little bond. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's so, yeah, there's just something about reality TV that just brings people together. <laughs> just a positive thing about that, you know? <laughs> and here you are on Out of the Pod. So, yeah. Yeah. hey, it's a, it's a fun little world. But um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, where are you from? Where are you currently based? What do you do for a living? Yeah, so I mean, I'm from Jersey, like born and raised, and I move around a lot. I do a lot of like short term rentals because I like to like kind of change it up. I'm in a weird part Very of my cool. life where I'm like, let me just like kind of figure out. I myself. like that vibe. <laughs> so, yeah, right. So um, I was living in Delaware for a little bit. Um, after Perfect Match, I moved to Oregon. Um, I technically still oh. live in Oregon. It's a long story, but um, I'm going back there after my band's tour. I'm in a cover band. 
Uh, we tour all over the mid-Atlantic for the summer and then I'm going back to Oregon and kind of living my life. So yeah, I've been just kind of hanging out in the Delaware, Jersey area for now while we're on tour. And then I get to go home to the Pacific Northwest, which will be a lot of fun. And um, for a living, I work it, I do my band, that's like a summer thing. And then I work in nightlife and parties. Um, in Portland, I actually um, volunteer at a comedy club where I like help out with like the bartending stuff. So that's a lot of fun. And yeah, it's it's been fun. <laughs> I love that. I remember I saw a TikTok of you like right after Perfect Match came out and you were singing and I remember commenting on it and being like, oh my God, you have oh, such you. a beautiful voice. Thanks. I was like, I have to comment. And I rarely comment on, on people's things on TikTok, but I was like, I have to. I appreciate so, it. You know what's so funny? People yeah. are always like, why didn't you sing on the show? Like, I, like no one knew you were a singer. And I'm just like, yeah. you know, I feel like on a dating show, like th there's like a time and place. Like it doesn't matter how good you are. If you're singing like on a dating show, I feel like that's kind of cringe. Like, you know, like imagine me just like serenading Joey. I could be the best singer in the world. That's weird. You know, like, I know hate to people who sing on TV and, you know, go for it. But like time and place, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like Sal from our season, season two just... with his ukulele, he got a lot of hate for singing, oh. for serenading mm -hmm. Mal, but also Zach from season four as well. I think people... Oh, like no. we're making comments about him singing to Irina, who he proposed oh, to. Oh, yeah. In the that, so I, I, I feel like it's just not a good mix singing on reality I TV. I know, show. and it's so sad because they're such sweet gestures. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's cute, but it like, is. yeah, I guess like from reality TV standpoint, it like doesn't go over as well. Oh my god, that breaks my heart. I, I know. I love. I've never met Me him, too. but I loved watching him. Mm -hmm. um he was such a sweetie <laughs> yeah he is i've met him a couple times now and he's definitely a, a sweetheart but oh, um, yeah. okay well you know most people know you from perfect match but mm -hmm. you were kind of like a reality tv show veteran you yeah. were on sexy beast sexy you beast. did are you the one along with mm -hmm. perfect match can you tell us like how did you get into reality tv like how did it all start Yes. Yeah, so um, originally it started um, after I was in like the music scene and then I just like I felt like I want to try something different just because in music it can be a little like toxic and I just felt like it didn't stand for the things I stand for as far as like certain like how do I word this? I just felt like there was a very toxic evil energy attached to my situation. So I was just trying to move out of that and find some other kind of entertainment. And I just started applying to reality shows. Um, and I was like, oh, I guess this works for me. And <laughs> Sexy Beast was actually funny. It was during the pandemic. Um, I was pursuing comedy, actually, like stand up. And so I was on a casting site um, as a comedian, like looking for like skits to join or like, you know, just like any kind of gig I could get. And um, whether it was virtual or what. And then I saw um, Sexy Beast casting. We didn't know the name. We knew nothing about it. Um, all it was pitched as or like was like said was a comedic twist to blind dating. So Stop. I was like, boom, like two things that like I do very well is like comedy and <laughs> so I was like, I immediately applied and um, it was like a bit of a process, whatever. And then all of a sudden it was like, OK, like come to London and we're in the middle of a pandemic. So I'm like, is this like a scam? Because oh. I've never heard of the show. I don't know what the actual show is like. Yeah, I didn't even know yeah. what it was. Um, I kind of had a feeling because they said it was like a major like streaming platform. So I was like, oh, no. Um, so I was like, is this, is this legit? you know, so I was like, oh, whatever, YOLO. So luckily it was all good. Um, I went to London, quarantined for two weeks, filmed Sexy Beast for about three or four days. And then I went home and it came out like a year later. <laughs> Wow. Wait, so did you had no idea the concept of the show when you arrived? I had no idea. They would not tell me anything. I asked so many questions. I was like, okay, so like a comedic twist of blind dating, like am I behind a what is like love is blind? Like what? Yeah. Like, what's like the vibe? And then they were just like, oh yeah, um, you'll see when you get there. By the way, are you allergic to latex? And I was like, yo, this shit sounds weird. I was like, what the hell am I on? Like, yeah, I was what? like, oh my God, it, like this sounds a little crazy. So yeah, I knew nothing <laughs> about, and then when I get out of quarantine, I'm hyped. Like they're like, send us some pictures of some outfits you have. I'm sending them pictures there and like, you know me, like I, I'm like, I'm gonna be on the show. Like I have like the sluttiest things I can find. I'm like <laughs> showing it off and they're like, no, 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 no. Like do things like a bit more covered up. I was like, why you know and i'm like okay i mean it's november october in london like it's cold i get it whatever um <laughs> but they were like no 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 no. like you need to be covered up because of like a painting reason i was like 
paint. They were paint. like, yeah. I was like, um, okay. Like I thought maybe it was one of the dates, whatever. <laughs> and then I get there and I'm in like a full turtleneck dress. Like, okay, like let's get weird, you know? And um, going into hair and makeup. And then the one makeup artist is like, okay, so here's what you're gonna be. And like holds up a huge panda head. And I was like, what? Oh my god! I would lose my shit. I would lose my shit. I'd be like, wait, what? I was like, wait, a panda? He was like, yeah. I was like, okay. And like, I didn't know. You know how it is. They like never tell you anything, so they get your reaction. And yeah. So, like, I didn't know if I was the only one in prosthetics. I didn't know what anybody else looked like. I got like, I saw the panda. I was like, oh my god, this could be so terrible. But then I saw some of the other prosthetic makeup like masks, and I was like, oh wow, they actually did me pretty well because the panda yeah. was like, kind of cute. Like right. when I was watching Sexy Beast, there was like a decaying zombie. There oh. was like like so many things that were just like, but it, it's so incredible because the makeup artists were so talented. Like oh, yeah. they were so good. It was so oh, much yeah. more it, than just putting on a mask, you know? Like Yeah, you, we saw the show and I was like, wow, incredible. this is like legit. The way that they cover people yeah. up, I was like, this is actually legit. It's not like mm -hmm. some costume stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was so incredible because like I'm watching, I'm very expressive if you couldn't tell. And like I literally, <laughs> like you can like see my face moving with the mask. Like they put yeah. it on so perfectly and they did that every that. day for three hours, which was That's incredible. That's insane. Wow. Yeah, it was Three smart. hours. Oh. I had two hours to take it off. They had to take like acetone to like take the glue off your face. My skin hated me for like a month oh, after that. Oh, I'm sure. oh my gosh. How did you get from Sexy Beast to Perfect Match? Like how did you start casting for that? Um, so after Sexy Beast, it, um, Sexy Beast came out July 21st of 2021, I believe. And it was like a few months after. It wasn't that long after, I remember. And um, someone called me and was like, hey, like, we have like this new like show idea we think you'd be like a great fit for if you're interested. They were like, are you single? And I was like, obviously. They're like, okay, well, like, <laughs> would you be interested? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, you know, and I didn't think anything of it because like, and I was like, okay, like, don't get too excited. Like, you know, like, you know, trying to like humble myself, like, okay, girly, like you were on like the small show where you were a panda bear, like, you know, like, don't, don't get your hopes up. Basically. A cute panda bear. <laughs> yeah, cute panda bear. Yeah. yeah. But, you know? And, yeah. um, yeah. And so then, you know, like they would check in like here and there, like, um, you know, just kind of like telling me about like the casting process and all that stuff. So, you know, I, I did all my stuff and then sure enough, you know, they're like, Hey, like you're going to Panama. I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> Wait, I love that. Obviously, Joey was your perfect match. But can you tell us before we get into, you know, the time with him on the show? Like, can you tell us a little bit about the history with Joey before you got on the show? Yeah, so it was in the beginning of 2020 when we first met. Um, it was like, I think like the first few episodes of The Circle had already come out. It was before it was like even like big or anything, you know, and mm -hmm. um, he didn't really have that m many followers or nothing. And I um, had just like DM'd him and something like, oh, love seeing like, you know, East Coast folks like represent, like, <sighs> like you know, just like being like nice, supportive. So whatever. you slid into the DMs. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and um, but you know, what? I, I always shoot my shot, whatever. Yeah, so Girl, girls can slide in the DMs too. And, um, <laughs> I love that. And I um. He immediately, like literally, like instantly responds back and he goes, you single, what's your number? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like, it's so funny, like uh, not that long ago or like right after Perfect Match, we like scrolled up to like look at our old conversations. It's just uh -huh. so funny. And um, I gave him my number or whatever. And like we immediately were just like flirting. We were like FaceTiming all the time. Um, at like, I think it was like the circle finale party or something. We like literally FaceTimed for like, hours before he went out he was like i'm gonna Aww. skip this party i want to talk to you i was like no 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 like go to oh party. my gosh like, what are you doing That's you know cute. and yeah. um i'm and like he um i, I met like shuby on facetime and like uh shubal oh, i love shuby yeah. um yeah. it was um just like it was so funny because like right after that we were kind of talking about like okay like this is like fun whatever like you know we didn't think anything of it he lives in la i live in i was living in new york at the time and then my job had been like hey like you know would you want to go to LA for literally like 24 hours like we need like an extra couple people and I was like yeah so I immediately called Joey I was like you're never gonna guess what like I'm going to LA he goes okay I'm canceling all my plans come over after we're gonna go out and we're gonna hang out we're gonna meet in person I was like okay bet so then 
I fly to LA, I do my thing at work, and you know, I'm pre-gaming a little bit because I'm so nervous. And then I literally uh, Uber over to his house, and then immediately we just start making out. Like, there was like no room for oh introduction. My gosh. We're just going at it. And oh. um, then we go out and you know, I, I meet like all of his friends. And um, he takes me to the place he like worked at and like I'm meeting everybody. He's meeting my friends because I met up with some of my friends in LA too. And we were literally just out like all night, like till like five or six in the morning. And um, my that. flight is in like two hours. So I'm just like, all right, <laughs> like peace, dude. And he's like, no, 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 like you can't leave. You're not leaving. Like spend the weekend with me. And like my dumb ass, I'm like, okay. So I literally <laughs> like canceled my jobs for the weekend. I stayed with him for like three two or three days like a complete stranger and um yeah i spent the weekend with him and then i went home and it like fizzled out and then ever since then it was a lot of like him being like oh hey like how's it going you know and then me being like yeah. hey how's it going and then mm -hmm. um closer to sexy beast um when that was like coming out there was some rekindling there i stayed at his house um while i was in la and like we were like kind of like talking again and it lasted like pretty long that time um and then it eventually again like just like you know fizzled out just like different expectations and different um just like different wants i guess and then yeah. perfect match we all know what happened there so. yeah. yeah so did producers know when you were going through the casting process for, for perfect match did producers know that you and joey had some history together um, I don't think they did beforehand, but when we like gave like our introductions and stuff and they asked like, oh, have you ever like hooked up with anyone from Netflix? Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, like I, you know, have some history with like Joey and like all that kind of stuff. And there was actually a story where like me and Calvin were like flirting, which is like so funny. Cause like now he's like <laughs> my best friend. Like I do not look yeah. at him like that. But like yeah. back in the, like when I first met him, he and I were like, Hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, like now we're boys, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, now he's that. one of the girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, 100%. Like he's, he's literally family. Like he comes to all my family parties. Like my family all like adores him. Like that, that is my family for life. <laughs> yeah. I well, I, I was just thinking about it. So Deepti and I were actually part of the casting process for Perfect Match season one. I mean, we both had declined it at the time just because we had just come out of filming Love is Blind um, season two. I was in a relationship and Deepti, I think you were just like, I'm not doing a show that I haven't seen before. <laughs> that was kind <laughs> type of thing. Kyle. But I always, yeah. I always think like even talking to you, I was like, oh my gosh, we could have all been on a show together at one point. So it's kind of crazy yeah. how like there's so different crazy. paths in life. Yeah, yeah. 100%. It yeah, but is. you know, immediately on Perfect Match, you match up with Joey. Did you know he was going to be on the show? And was that kind of your plan to like match up with him? So for me, whenever I knew Joey, like for as long as I knew Joey, he was always like, yeah. I would never do a dating show, like always. So actually, when I was like in the casting process, I was like, Ooh, Joey's gonna be so jealous. I'm gonna be on like the same <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so like when he was on it, I was like, yeah. oh shit, you know. And, and knowing myself, like I was such a weak person for Joey that I'm like, ah, oh, if he's here, I can't be with no one else, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think there was like, re this is like annoying feedback, but I think a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, like you and Joey were just kind of faking it on the show. And then he proposed to you though. But like, what was your stance on that? Like, how did you feel about people saying that? I'm I sure it was like, hard. Yeah, I mean, like, again, like we kind of talked about how like, there's haters who will literally say things that's like not true. Like, I remember I told mm -hmm. you guys, like people literally told me I faked having a twin sister. Like, yeah. That, like I, I have like, a what? twin sister you know what I mean yeah. like so it's Prove like for people, it. yeah, yeah so like it. for people to give an opinion like I try to like kind of like take myself out of it like yeah. being like oh like you know I'll even meet strangers they're like oh do you think Joey ever really loved you and I'm like um ow uh, yeah, <laughs> so, you, yeah. Know, like, you know I I know what my life was like with Joey and so yeah. I feel like I have an accurate representation of what I believe so yeah. you know if people want to like kind of like say whatever yeah it, it's like a little hurtful because like obviously it sucks for like people to like give their opinion on you and your ex especially like when it was like still kind of like so soon but yeah. I try to take myself out of it because like I was there they weren't like I know my relationship with Joey they don't so exactly 
Yeah. And I honestly think a lot of the feedback came from how all of the couples from Perfect Match didn't work out. And I think that you're kind of lumped into, I think you and Joey were so much more serious considering the history you guys have. So I think yeah, you're just yeah. lumped into everyone being like, oh, the couples didn't work out. It was, you know, yeah. it wasn't all real. I mean, we felt that with our season too, when oh, we yeah. had the two couples who got married on our season, they divorced a year later and people were like, oh my God, it was fake. Like what a fail of a season. And I'm like, no, it's just life. And yeah, a hundred percent. And I, I think it's so funny. They're like, damn, like, what did I watch this for? Like, I'm so disappointed. I'm like, you're disappointed. I'm disappointed. Yeah. I want this to work out. What do you mean? <laughs> exactly. It's <laughs> like, almost it's as if me. like, it's not about you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, everyone has such an opinion when it's like, I wish my feelings weren't real. And this was all fake. Like that would make life so much easier. Yeah. But, you know, that's not the case, but yeah. uh, that, you know, that's another question is, you know, since you did have this history with Joey, what made you say yes to his proposal on the show? Because you kind of, both of you kind of had a trajectory of it, you know, not working out. What made mm -hmm. you say yes to him? I think because like, one, we got so much closer on the show. Like when you have no distractions, like, mm -hmm. and especially too, like this was such a new experience for both of us. Like we only really had each other. So it was like, you know, like there's so much of like, an emotional bond there that's like beyond anything I'll ever have with anybody else. You yeah. know, like that's just what it is. And I think that's one of the reasons why this whole process without him has been so hard was because like, that was like my like safe space. That was like my home base. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I think towards the end of the show, like after like this, like crazy, like out of body experience, almost like we had together, I was like, in my head, I was a hundred percent, like there's no world where he and I don't work out after this, you know, like mm -hmm. I was a hundred percent, sent like set like okay like like everything happens for a reason like the timing was never right we were both all over the place now everything's right this is exactly how it's supposed to go like we're meant to be with each other essentially and mm -hmm. um you know even before perfect match like you know like the day i met joey he's like i'm gonna marry you one day you know so it's like mm -hmm. it's not like wow. i never didn't think about marrying joey every time we dated yeah. he was always like i'm gonna marry you you know yeah. so <laughs> yeah yeah. And so after your engagement with Joey on the show, what happened when the cameras turned off? I like, how was, was your like, really engagement like with him post show? I think it was like a lot of just like expectations on like different sides. Like he had expectations, I had expectations. And like, I just think that like, when you're in a world where like, you don't have to really worry about anything. And then yeah. all of a sudden, everything floods in with things like that are valid things to like worry about on like both sides. Like, I just think it ultimately mm -hmm. like it wasn't working. And I think we were both like, Hey, before we absolutely hate each other, like, let's just like, let's just cut everything and just like support each other from afar at the very least, you know? Cause yeah. one thing I will say about me and Joey is we have been very, very good at like keeping our cool, um, which I can really appreciate and respect. And, you yeah. know, like, I still support him and he still supports me from afar, you know, mm -hmm. like, I like when people yeah. meet me in person and they want, like, if sometimes I'll be like, oh, like, you know, if they're like, screw your ex, I'm like, no, 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 he's a great guy, you know, like, yeah. it, it's not screw my ex, <laughs> it's, it's, it didn't work out, but, you know, it, it was a lesson for both of us and we were just taking it from there. Yeah. yeah. And, and it is hard because you guys were are living on opposite ends of the country. So yeah. it's like, that's like another added layer too. And I do have to say that when I saw Joey at the live reunion for the Love is Blind live reunion, he did have so many positive things to say about you. Yeah. And so I think you both are in the same boat of like just uplifting each other from, from afar. Yeah. You know? we, we call ourselves divorced parents because <laughs> like, that's literally like the relationship we have, like, like these events, like we're both, when we're both somewhere like it, it's fine mm -hmm. no one feels uncomfortable we yeah. like meet everybody we like talk to like all of our fellow castmates and like you know like no one's uncomfortable but like i'm not yeah. going on my way to be like hey like how's your life going you know what i mean right like, yeah like, yeah like, yeah boundary different there, energy but, like i still support you and you know i still appreciate like the time we have together because like i said yeah. like, I, we were together from start to finish on perfect match and like that's such a mm -hmm. big adjustment and yeah. like you know like that was he, he sucked in my he's such a big part of my life. He always will be, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I don't want to hate somebody like that. You know, I feel like there are obviously moments it's easy to, cause you disagree with somebody, but you know, like at the end of the day, like I, I am thankful for him. I'm thankful I had him there. And I try yeah. to just hone in on that and not think about the rest of the chaos that happened in the midst of everything. 
Yeah, we always say, you know, you always need that one person to get through that chapter of your life, you know? Yeah, 100%. And you know, perfect. I learned a lot. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm so different than who I was when I was on Perfect Match. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. I, I changed so much in a year. And, you know, I think that, you know, my journey with Joey was a big part in that. So, like, if I love who I am now, I can't ever, like, regret or, like, hate somebody that helped me get to where I am. So, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the experience I had with him. But, like, I also knew it was time to, you know, call it quits. And so did he. Yeah. No one to yeah. leave the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 Like, cause, like yeah. I would I would hate to go through this whole perfect match experience and, like, us, like, bashing each other, like, hating each other. Like, that Like that just doesn't – that would be terrible for me personally. Like, I, I would yeah. hate that. And I think he would too. So I'm very happy we're on the same page with that at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went through that with my ex um, from Love is Blind. Like, we had a very, like, tumultuous post-show relationship that, like, played out in social media. Like – after the show premiered and it causes you just so much stress. And at the end of the day, you think like, what was the point? Like, what was mm -hmm. the point? Like who, where yeah. was the benefit of saying, you know, saying like all these negative things about each other? Yeah. I think, and I, um, yeah. And like, I love you and I love Shane, you know, I love both of you. And I think you're both great people. And, and it sucks to see two people who are so great, you know, when, you just you want the best for everybody, you know, because like, yeah, it, it's it's just a shame. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's it's tough because you people are taking whatever is happening for public entertainment, like, you know, almost like an extension of the show. And, and so I kind of finally came to that realization, like, it's really just like, what's the point? It's not serving me in any way, like privately or like my own soul. So um so I like commend you and Joey for having, you know, a cordial relationship and the way that you just saw that relationship. I feel like Deep D and I are just getting there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And I try to think back like, okay, do I think Joey is a terrible person? I'm like, no, I don't, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let me try Like at the end of the day, like I didn't have to marry him to marry him. Like I'm tied to him for life or until yeah. people just stop giving a damn, you know? Yeah. So like, you know, I, I just feel like I'm just like, okay, like, I think he's a good person and, you know, we have our differences and I just have to kind of like leave it at that because like there was so much like love with him through a yeah. lot of my life. So I just try to make the best of the situation I was given and keep a tough face when, you know, the haters come at me. So yeah. <laughs> Wait, so on your time at Perfect Match, did, were you like interested in anyone else besides Joey? Um, there was definitely like, so I wasn't really too sure if I wanted to necessarily match up with Joey like night one or if I really wanted to go down with that. I mean, like I always knew, but like I entertained like another idea. Um, yeah. and I remember, Ooh, can we yeah, tell us who? It, and, um, so the night one, I actually was interested in Dom at first, like, no! talking, Joey, no! like got to talking. Yeah, yeah. Like, but, like, you know, like I love like emo boys. I love emotional boys. So like, you know, and I just, I was like really dope. And like, yeah. he was like the first person I actually talked to. So immediately I was like, oh, wow. Like I could really like see myself like getting along with this guy. Like he seems like yeah. really dope. And then Joey just like seals me away. And then that was, <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> and now Dom's today. one of my really good friends too. So it's so funny looking oh back at that. <laughs> Here's all, I did Dom's podcast recently and it was so easy to talk to him. We were supposed to be like an hour long and we ended up being there for so much longer. And it's like, oh. it was so, so, so fun. Like he's yeah. such a good guy. He He's very, very sweet. I, I'm very yeah. big on like energy and like knowing people's yes. energy. And then when I first me met too. him, I was like, oh my God, like I really love this guy's energy, you know? And yeah. I just, I think he's such a sweetheart. And I wish he and I like hung out more on the show because it would have been nice to have a friend who was dealing with what I was dealing with, which was at the very start of the show to the end, basically. No mm -hmm. one really knew anything about us because our shows hadn't come out yet, you know? Or his show didn't come oh, out. I was a panda bear, you know? So like no one really <laughs> knew like anything about that. So, you know, You're looking so back, funny. I'm like, damn, me and Dom could have had like such an alliance. Like we could have yeah. like, you know, really at each other's backs. But I'm very fortunate that like I consider him a really, really good friend now. And yeah. I'm very happy yeah. um, about that. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think Perfect Match can be a serious dating reality TV show? Because you talked about like alliances and like that's a thought I had watching the show. It's so much more strategic than other dating shows on Netflix, which the only thing I could really think of is like love is blind and too out to handle right now. But I feel like there's some people who go in with a strategy type of thing. Is that I guess is that what you need to be like for you to kind of like succeed on Perfect Match? 
So I'm a hopeless romantic and I would say follow your heart. And like, I know that's so funny. I mean, I've been on quite a few dating shows, like let's call it what it is. Um, And, you know, I think my first dating show, I did go more the strategy route and I'm just like, okay, what did I get out of it? You know? And Mm -hmm. it was just like, you know, not really much of a anything at that point, you know? And, you know, a perfect match, like all heart. Like I was just kind of like, you know, really in my feels, really emotional. And, um, you know, I just think any time in life, like, that's just like my thing. Like, yeah, maybe you'll get hurt a little more. Like, you know, maybe it's not always like the smartest thing to do, but I think you benefit so much more when you take experiences for like everything they are and everything they have to offer. Cause like at the end of the day, if you have a strategy and it doesn't work out, like, what did you really benefit? You know, Mm -hmm. like at least if I tried it with Joey and he was like, okay, you know what? Like, I don't want this. And like, I was out like night two or something like, you know, at least like I went into it, like, you know, going after someone like I've just always had like a thing for, and then, you know, I would have known. So I'm always say go all heart strategy. Strategy is like a good idea in theory, but like, I don't think long-term it really works out the way you would think it does. In my yeah. Cause I, f- I feel like Nick and Savannah, I love them both, but I feel like they were very strategic on the show and it kind of like plays where everyone's kind of trying to figure out who to match up with yeah. you. And it, I feel like it just kind of never works unless you're, you know, unless the person that you're trying to strategize with is like really into it as well. Well, yeah, it's interesting. Oh. I feel like I f- someone said something that I think is so true. I feel like we, when you go to your next show, you almost treat it like your first show, you know, like they were mm-hmm. both on the circle where it's like, you have to be strategic. Like there's like, oh, like right. that's all true. strategy. So, that's you know, so like if you're not used to anything else, that's just how you're going to be. You know, mm-hmm. like my first show was, are you the one? It's all about finding your perfect person. Like, so it's all about like, you know, like mixing things up, being in like other people's businesses. Like that's how I was, you know? Yeah. And um, so like, yeah. So I think that um, that was so interesting watching it back. So I was like, oh, wow. Like they were both on the circle. Like, of course they're both going to be strategic, you know? Yeah. And at the yeah. end of the day, it's interesting because with Perfect Match, it's re- it is a competition show, but it's about like winning with your partner and finding love. Mm-hmm. And so like at some point you are strategic because you're like, okay, well maybe like there's other people coming in that could be my match. And that's really the ultimate goal. But like, Mm -hmm. if you think about the prize at the end, it's like, you're going on a vacation with somebody that you think is your perfect match. Like it's not really like, okay, like here's like a giant sum of money. So like, I feel like the intentions behind perfect match can be pure and you know i'm a hopeless romantic too so i'm like oh i just like hope something good can come from it you know yeah no yeah yeah, exactly and like at the end of the day i think it is so much more like hearted you know like love is blind is obviously like way more serious and like Mm -hmm. you know there's like you're sacrificing so much more like what i liked about perfect match is i was like okay like this is just like fun it's light like it's sexy Mm -hmm. like you know like so I, i feel like you know there was a lot less pressure then, you know, maybe like another like dating show. So, you know, I I think that was like kind of like a cool aspect of it was and it was just like, you know, like everyone was like, I thought they did really well in casting for season one. Like it was just like, like everyone was fun. Like, like to this day, like I think every single person on that cast was like incredible, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, just overall, I felt like it was like, just like a good vibe in in my experience. I love that. Good. Well, I, I love that you and the cast are so close and you, it seems like all of you guys, like most of you guys all hang out, um, going back to perfect match and being on that show, like anything that happened during filming that didn't make the show, whether it involved you or you were surprised, you know, like something didn't actually play on TV. Um, I guess like a lot of like smaller moments, just like so many, I feel like just so many moments with me and Joey, like so many fights didn't make it. So many makeups didn't make uh, it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, just like, that's me and Joey. Like, like how much of that do you want to see? Like, it's just the cycle going round and round. Y'all already know. <laughs> <laughs> There's something called the post-show blues that I call it, which is when you're, yes. you're literally like on this high and like, you know, your body's kind of in survival mode because like, you know, you're having like a really great experience, but like your mind is like, is this trauma? I don't know. So, you know, mm-hmm. like, it, like, because it, it doesn't understand. And so you come back home. So it's like, you just have this crazy experience. Like you don't have to think about anything. You're stripped away from your family. This is your entire world is these people. And you're just stripped away from all of them. You were expected to just go back to regular life. And also I was a bartender. I wasn't one of these influencers, like going home. You know what I mean? Like I like, um, 
I was expected to bartend, you know? So it was like, mm-hmm. it was, and like, I don't know if anyone's ever worked service, but like, it, it's a very demanding job and it's very hard. Yeah. And especially if you take time off of it, it, it can, it's hard to get your pace back. So it was just like yeah. a lot of like, you know, I felt like a lot of difficulties and, um, you know, I felt like for me personally, like I like hit like a low, it's like you're on this big high and then you like hit a low and like, totally. I expect it, you know, I, I feel very fortunate that I feel like I'm mentally strong enough to deal yeah. with that. Um, yeah. and I know how to healthily, you know, go with it. Um, but, um, yeah, like it, it was, I, I think when you leave that high and then you're in that low, I think it can be, you know, very difficult one in your relationship and two, yeah. it's just, it, it's just like a hard thing in general, you know, and, and you can't even talk about it. No, yeah. really. No, that was a really we went hard through that thing. Too, I feel like, Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. My mom looked at me and she was like, she's like deep to you look like a shell of a person. Like there's no life to you. And I'm usually like a very bubbly outgoing. Yeah, you are. Girl. And my mom's like, something's like off. She's like, go off to LA, like leave this space, like mm-hmm. just go do something, you know? But yeah, I yeah. totally relate to that too. Same. My dad was like, you lost your mojo. Yeah. And to be honest, I haven't really gotten it back where I used to also be like a really outgoing person. And I feel like when the cameras are off and then you just start thinking about like what you went through and sometimes you just, I don't know, it just changes you in a weird way. But mm-hmm. it's, a, um, it's, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, are, is there anyone, I know you mentioned that you are you still talk to people from the perfect match cast who are you closest to on the cast um so me and francesca are still really close me and dom are still really close um me and shane are still close like i said i love you both separately so i'm very i don't have <laughs> that's okay like, hey, you know, i don't let i don't ask people to take sides so no worries <laughs> I, perfect and um who else i would say um, Bartiz, uh, I'm still, I love Bartiz. Um, yeah. I always say I never dated Bartiz, so I can love him like, you know, because he's never traumatized me, but um, <laughs> I, I have to give him so much credit because I feel like being a dad really, really turned his life around, yeah. you know, like I feel mm. like he really stepped up and he is like doing great. And like, I just, I, I adore him. I think he just needed to grow up and I think he's finally mm-hmm. there. Which yeah. is awesome. Good. Um, Good. I grew up, yeah, I feel like, yeah, there's definitely, um, yeah. Yeah, I would say those are the people I talk to, like, more regularly, I guess. Probably Dom and Francesca the most. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just two people I really love, which is so funny because, like, uh, uh, obviously what happened on the show, but, like, you yeah, know, time maybe. changes. And uh, when the show came out, um, it was when... Uh, Am I allowed to say spoilers? I think it's been some time. Yeah. 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 It was the four episodes after Francesca and Dom, like, you know, like separate or whatever. And like, people are like, wow, what the hell? Blah, blah, blah. And the four of us were all at Disneyland together. Me, Dom, <laughs> Francesca, and her boyfriend. So I was Wait, like, guys, so it ain't that funny. deep anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, time has passed. We're good. We're healed. <laughs> I know. So yeah. it, it's so funny because I'll always be like, yeah. yeah, Dom and Francesca are probably two of like, you know my best friends from the show and calvin obviously but calvin has always been like my homie like i don't even associate him with perfect match because i met him before perfect match and he's like my best best friend in the whole entire planet so i'm just like he he's not just like my cast friend like he is my family you know i forget we were even i love that yeah i I love him so much i think people forget that you know when you're on a netflix show it takes so long for them to release it um, cause perfect match came out a year after you guys finished filming. So obviously a lot can happen in the year. Same with our season. Like it took, I think eight or nine months from when filming ended to when it actually came out. And like so much happens in those nine months and so much like healing happens that like, of course, like new friendships are going to prop up that like, doesn't make sense if you just watch the show. So, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Like I was saying before too, like even like in the show, like me and Dom weren't very close and then we became very close, like after the show, you know? Um, mm-hmm. and what's so funny too, is the same thing with like Mitch and Damien. Like I see Damien all the time. Still, he's someone else. I still talk to a lot. Oh yeah. There's and, some dating um, rumors with you two. <laughs> oh yeah. That was a whole other thing. But yeah, Mitch too. I never talked to Mitch on the show. I didn't even like Mitch that much. Now I love the kid to death. You know what yes. I mean? I'm like, I like, you know, um, but yeah, yeah. Dave and I are very close. That is definitely, I think. Oh, I love that. Okay, should we play a game, Nat? 
Yeah. So we have a new segment called, is it a red flag? So we received so many DMS on our Instagram page out of the pods about weird potential red flag situations. And we just wanted your input on them. So one of our listeners messaged us saying that she has been dating a guy who says he doesn't have social media. However, she found his Facebook after doing some creeping (laughs) side note. I feel like every time you're dating a guy, you become like an FBI agent. Like I feel like after give me 20 minutes, and his yeah. company and his first name, and I will find everything about him. But anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I just found a girl recently. Uh, I didn't have a name. I had no information about her, and I found her. I had a, I had a gut feeling. I found You're her. You're like everything. <laughs> That's so But funny. anyways, I digress. Um, she said she saw he posted a new Facebook profile picture three months ago, but besides that, hadn't posted on Facebook for a year. But she feels like he lied to her about – not having social media, but her friends say Facebook doesn't really count when you're in your twenties and he's not very active on it anyways. What's your thoughts? I would say it's a red flag. Right? I just give yeah. the benefit of the doubt. Now I feel like whenever you have like an inkling, like, Ooh, maybe that's weird. I feel like it's like, right. You know yeah. what I mean? I feel yeah. like, I feel like she wouldn't have done her digging in the first place if she didn't think something was off somewhere else. Yes, so I, I agree. would say probably red flag. Abs- yeah, it, it sounds like maybe maybe there's some some stuff there. I would bet he has an Instagram too, and he's lying. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I bet it's like really hard to find. Like he doesn't use his like real name or something, or not uses his real name, like but it's finster. like a it's a just like a handle that's not associated with his name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my favorite that's trick for this is you type in their phone number on cash app, see what their cash app username is, and then like type it in and like see if it's like on Instagram or Twitter or TikTok. <laughs> Stop. That is so genius. Yeah, right. Wait, I love that. That's a level of creep I needed in my life. <laughs> 100%. I'm such a cash app queen when it comes to like finding Wait, people. Like it is so such funny. a great tool. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That's so okay. funny. Okay. I also agree with you. I think it's a red flag. If he had an old Facebook that was from like his high school days and he just like never used it, then I'd be like, it's not right. We like, I used to have, Oh yeah. I don't use I Facebook. A, I used to, yeah. I used to have a Facebook that I deleted, um, prior to the show coming out that I hadn't used since I was like 14, but I was, mm-hmm. it just like, I would consider 14. Not Natalie's really a red flag. <laughs> No, but you know what I'm saying? Like, if you have like an old account, like you don't use, like, then oh, I mean, but the fact I he posted Facebook. a f- profile photo three months ago, I feel like that's a red flag. Yeah. yeah that, like, that is like kind of recent. That's like, I'm like, I'm on Twitter, but like, I don't use Twitter. But like, if someone yeah. was like, oh, are you on Twitter? I'd be like, I mean, yeah, but like, I'm never on it. Like, I feel like you would just be like, oh yeah, I mean, I have Facebook, but like, I don't use it. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. To negate it completely is a red flag. Yeah. yeah or I just yeah. say, exactly. I'm not active on social media. Yeah. I feel like instead of saying I don't have social media. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. The math ain't mathing. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> leave him, please. <laughs> to whoever. Yeah. I would uh, say okay. that's a red flag. <laughs> that's a yeah. red flag. Okay, wait. Okay, so I have another one. So one of our listeners, she's been dating this guy for about three months now, and things are going really well. They have really good chemistry. They have a lot of fun together. But apparently he only takes her out on night dates. So every time she asks him to go out to like brunch or like out with her friends during the weekend, he always has an excuse and he's like, no, I can't make it. And so the dates have strictly just been weekdays and mostly only at night because he's working during the day. Do you think that that's a red flag? Weird. And it's been three months, you know, that's kind of a long time. Are they like serious or they just like talking? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, they've been dating for three months exclusively. So. Damn. Okay. Maybe, maybe he's someone who like values his weekends or like maybe there's something else he's doing on the weekends or like maybe. Yeah. Okay. Hear me out. I feel mm-hmm. like brunch or like a Saturday night out is way more intimate than like going out on like a Monday, you know? Yeah. So like maybe it's a commitment yeah. thing. Could be. To be honest, you're so right. Like whenever you're like first dating, on like dating apps, whatever you find somebody, it's always weekday nights. You know yeah. what I mean? You never want to yeah. like sacrifice your weekends with your friends or mm-hmm. your family, whatever it is for like yeah. a new fling. You know what I mean? 100%. I will 
never do a first day on a weekend yeah. ever. I'm like, I no. did not burn that. Absolutely yeah. not. You know, right. so like it could be like him still keeping himself like separate from her. Yeah. So wait, you we don't think that this is a red flag. We just think maybe he's like kind of taking his time. Maybe it's a beige flag. <laughs> I think yeah. I think that it is a yellow flag. Yellow. You know, like it's about mm-hmm. to turn red. But like, yeah. you know, I, I think there needs to be more questions. I think she needs to be like more upfront. Like, I think she needs to be like, hey, bro, like three <laughs> months, like we got to go to brunch or something or I'm out, you know? Yeah, right. We're yeah. approaching fourth month here and something's got to escalate. That's like I a need big a deal. Oh my God. This one time I was dating this guy, yeah. like this was like maybe like four or five years ago now. Um, But I was dating this guy and we had been exclusively dating for four months almost four months it was three months almost four months and i do the what are we question oh, i'm sleeping at oh. your house i have a toothbrush there my clothes are in your house he's saying yeah. oh i don't know if i'm ready for a relationship bro what? you're in one you're in Dude, one <laughs> i'm watching your dog when you go on vacation what do you mean like so like that's where i'm like okay maybe that is a red flag because it's like three months like that's like yeah, like, yeah. Just start moving you know yeah three months is a long time it's a long time yeah yeah and honestly like, I hate women too and in lesbian years like three months like <laughs> that's years. literally like you should be moved in by then you know so like a hundred percent on love is blind standards you should be thinking <laughs> about having kids yeah you should exactly. be already at the altar <laughs> yeah like holy shit we're not getting any younger oh, here that's <laughs> yeah. good like literally um okay, i think it's this to I red agree. flag <laughs> uh, i agree that Where it's like a yellow be? slash red flag because honestly if he's not willing to give you his weekend times like what the fuck yeah. or you have to have the conversation of like what are we like what are we doing am i just yeah. like this like booty call are we just playing house or are we getting more serious because if yeah. a guy if a guy isn't making me breakfast on a saturday morning is if he's not taking a fucking walk with me in the park actually that never happens i don't know what i'm saying I was like, but a walk in the park that's cute. <laughs> we're not like but i know what you mean yeah yeah like and also no, it's you're just gonna take me to flag. dinner it's a little bit of a red flag on her end too to not have the conversation why aren't you communicating your feelings to be like bro wait I need you on the weekend. Because <laughs> well, we always play the cool girl. Yeah. yeah. She should drink a lot. You're totally right. But I feel like because girls typically, like I do this, I play the cool girl. I like I don't, don't do want to like, <laughs> there's a point I where I won't. Three months is too long to play cool girl. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I did it for eight months. <laughs> Oh my God. I wish I could be the cool girl. I am immediately like, okay, so like, what are like your future plans? Like what benefits do you have? Like, where do you see yourself? Like, would you marry me tomorrow? Like, I'm like, I want to like get in there. I understand no social boundaries. Wait, that's <laughs> yeah, no. See, I'm the opposite. Like if, if a guy doesn't respond to my text in four hours, I'm like spazzing out over here. But when he's like, oh, sorry, I was taking a nap. I'm like, oh, no worries. Like I was yeah. busy. It didn't, <laughs> didn't notice as I'm like, well, I need a Xanax. Literally, <laughs> I need a Xanax, please. Um, we have That's one fun. last one. So the guy that I'm dating is the founder of a successful company and hangs out with a wealthy social circle in New York City. He's very kind, but I think he might be a show off. For example, he subtly name drops celebrities he hangs out with. And recently he couldn't stop talking about the industry awards that he had won. Is it a red flag or is he just sharing life updates with me? No, I think it's a red flag. Right? He's it's insecure. Giving, yeah. It's giving sucking my own D. Like, it's yeah. like giving, like, like, mm, like, you know, like, like, like yeah. You know, like, I can't, like, like, I name dropping to me, like, as soon as someone name drops, I'm like, ew. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just like, ew. <laughs> yeah. It's one thing to be excited about, like, life things that are happening to you, but it's like being boastful about it. Or like doing yeah. it to make yourself feel better. I'm like, ooh, you can kind of tell when that energy is yeah, there. I feel like a lot of rich guys do that too. Like, oh, I, yeah. like I've met like the rich New York City folk. Like, I like totally understand the type of guy she's talking about. And like, there's guys that are either so humble you would never know that they have money, and then yes. there's guys that are like, ooh, me and Kim Kardashian hung out the other day. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And it's just like, oh, like you're so cool, you know? Yeah. Um, it's like so. I think that's a red flag. I know the type of person she's yeah. talking about. Yeah, <laughs> those were the red flag situations, and I think we thought they were all red flags. Yeah, I think a red flag is if you have to wonder if something is a red flag. I feel like it might be a red flag. Like you I know, am. I think I think it's pretty unless you have like crippling anxiety, like myself. But like <laughs> you know, I feel like for the average folk, like if you're like yeah. it's a red flag, like it, it 
really could be. Yeah, your intuition is right. It is, and you should leave. <laughs> yeah, exactly, hundred percent. But I feel like there's so many. Like we've normalized red flags so much that like these men mm -hmm. out here think they can just be like a walking red flag, and we'll think that they have nothing wrong with them. Exactly. Ever. Exactly. And I'm just like, bro. You know, I'm like, <laughs> as women, we have to stand together. And when they start doing this shady shit, we all have to be like, absolutely not, and put them in their place. They stop doing this shit. <laughs> I'm dead. Oh my God. You're such a ball of energy and you're so fun. I love it. But I, we have one last question for you, Carousel. What is next for you? What are your goals? Like, what does your future look like? So that was three I've questions. A lot, that was literally yeah, a lot. three questions. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I have um, been doing music. I'm actually releasing a single <gasps> on August 11th. Oh my God. Congratulations. Oh my gosh. It's What's called, it called Your Side of the Story. Um, I have like Ooh. my entire like heartbreak album coming out. Um, in September. So this is a single from that. Um, I did a poll on Instagram. I was like, do you want more of an angry kind of song or more of like a sad I miss you song? And, you know, Instagram chose violence. They want the angry like song. So we, I think it's a lot they of violence. Yeah, it's, it's very <laughs> pop punk. It's very fun. Um, you know, and I feel like we've all been able to like relate to that at some point where it's like, yeah. you know, um, but yeah. And other than that, I've been on tour with my band for the summer. Um, we're going to be playing shows all over the mid Atlantic until September 30th. And then I go back to Oregon, which is my home right now. So, um, I yeah, that. I got, I got a few more weeks of being on the East coast and playing music. And then I'm releasing some of my original music. So it should be That's fun. So exciting. <laughs> how can people find you on, uh, like, how can people find your music? So um, I am on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you can stream music. Um, it's just under Carousel, which is my name. That's also my handle for TikTok and Instagram. Um, just Carousel. <laughs> Love that. Nice. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much for coming on Out of the Pods. It was so amazing talking to you. You, like Deepy said, you are like a breath of fresh air. You are so energetic. Um, this was so fun talking to you, but we wish you the best and we hope you come back soon. Thanks. Yeah, yeah so, thank it's so nice to finally meet you, Natalie. And <laughs> well, I was you, say. Always a pleasure talking to you. Um, thank you guys so much for thinking of me and having me. Um, yeah. And yeah. Awesome. Yay. Thank you. <laughs>